Hey everyone, it's Doug at PickUpTheGuitar.com. Welcome back, and this is our next video on uh, how to compose with PowerTab Editor. And I've pulled up our file from our last video. Um, basically what I'd like to do is just continue adding some more music to it, and uh, we'll learn how to use more features of the software and see how all that works. Um, so the first thing I need to show off that uh, I actually mentioned in my last video, and then I think I forgot to show it off, was this icon up here, which is the score checker. If I click on this, it's actually a verification tool that will go through my whole file and tell me if I have any errors or silly mistakes. So in this case, it's giving me one error in measure four, which is the very last measure because that's all I have right now. And it's telling me I'm missing a double bar at the end of the score. So the reason for that is because at the very end of a song, you are supposed to actually have this double bar instead of an ordinary bar line, which signifies that that is the very last measure of the song and there's nothing to be played after that and you know the song is officially over basically so the way that I can fix that in my file is if I just hover the mouse over the very last bar line here you can see there's a vertical line that appears next to my mouse I can click right on this and it'll bring up this music bar window um, which we also got to by clicking this icon over here and uh, that's how we put in our ordinary bar lines last time so in this case to add the double bar it's the one all the way on the right, so I just select that and hit OK. And you can see it put that in there. So now if I check the tool again, that error has gone away because I fixed it. So this is technically correct, however, um, it won't cause any issues with the file being played or anything like that um, if you forget to leave that out. But again, it is technically correct to have that in there. Um, now since we do want to add more stuff, we don't want that to be the end of the song. I'm going to go ahead and actually change this right back to an ordinary bar line so we can go ahead and continue. So the first thing we need to do is learn how to add new lines because by default we only get one line to work with and uh, if we want to add more stuff we have to add a new line first. So the way that we do that is with this icon here for new section. So I just click on this and you can see it gives us a brand new line to work with. And on the left here is the number five. That's actually the measure number. So we had four measures and now we just added a fifth one. Um, so I think what I'm going to do is just kind of fill this in with a bunch of C notes. Um, you know, just kind of to have something there. Just like last time, I don't really have any music planned. So there we go. All right, now um, I'm going to click play here so we see how it sounds. But uh, what I want you to pay attention to is that this line that we just added is going to be played by guitar one. So it's gonna be played by the same instrument that we've already added here at the very beginning. So let's go ahead and take a listen. And yeah, last time we changed the sound of guitar one to a distorted guitar, so that's why it sounds the way it does. All right, and you can see it just moved right onto the next line automatically. Yep, and again, even though we don't have the double bar at the very end, the song still stops there. It doesn't cause any issues with playback or anything. Um, although if I click the tool again, you'll see that that error comes back. And you can see it says measure 8 now, because now we actually have 8 measures. And that's where it expects the end of the song to be. Okay, so um, Guitar One played this line that we added. Um, what we have to do if we want to actually have multiple instruments playing at the same time um, is add a different, uh, not a new line, but basically attach a new line to an existing line. And the way that we do that is with this icon right next to the one we just used, where it says attach staff. And basically I want to make sure I have my blue cursor on the line somewhere where I want to attach a new staff to. So I'm going to click this button and we can actually specify how many lines of tablature we want it to have. Um, we're just going to stick with six. And then we can add it either above or below the current line. So typically it's just going to be below. That's fine. Okay, and now this is different from what we just did because if you look on the left, there's this vertical line here that basically signifies um, that these two lines are meant to be played at the same time together. And, you know, typically by two different instruments. So one instrument plays this line, another instrument will play the line below it. Um, so now that we've attached a new line, um, the problem right now is we only have one instrument still. So the next step is we actually have to add another instrument that we want to use. So the way that we do that 
is we come up to guitar setup and again we only get one guitar by default but we can have a total of seven so to add a new instrument we just uh, click this icon here for add guitar okay and it's, you see it basically duplicates another tab for us so I'm gonna call this guitar 2 and just for consistency uh, consistent sound I'll make this a distorted guitar as well and standard tuning is fine we're gonna keep everything else the same just hit OK okay so now at this point we have added a second instrument um, obviously there's no music on our on our new line just yet so let's go ahead and do that next and again I'm just sort of filling it in here just to have something there now when I click play I want you to pay attention to what happens though so even though we created a new instrument we're not actually hearing this part get played we're still only hearing this first line where guitar one is and that's because not only do you have to create the instrument but you also have to go into your music and specify where you want that guitar to come in and start playing so the way that we do that is with this icon here where it says guitar in and basically I just want to make sure I have my cursor um, on the note that you know the first note that I want this guitar to start playing so if I want it to start playing at the very beginning of this line I have my cursor here I go into this window and this window is basically a summary of all of my instruments that I'm using and at what staff do they come in so um, guitar one you can see it says staff one and that's because you know it's right here it starts playing right at the very beginning in measure one um, now for guitar two the one that we just added it says NA and that means basically we've created the, the guitar but we're not actually utilizing it anywhere so what I want to do is click staff in for guitar two and hit OK and you can see it'll put in guitar two right there and now guitar two has been assigned to start playing at this line and so oop, actually I just noticed I made an error here I added an extra eighth note to this uh, fourth measure right here for the the guitar two part but this is actually a good opportunity I can show you the the verification tool one more time and I don't know if I mentioned this earlier but it'll also find errors such as you know if you accidentally add too many beats or not enough beats to a measure um, you can see for measure four here it gives me an error where it says um, you know measure total over by one eighth and that's because I added an extra eighth note in there by accident so if you don't catch it visually again you can use this tool and it'll kind of tell you you know hey buddy go back and go back and fix that okay there we go so now anyway getting back on track if I go ahead and play this file again um, you'll hear that guitar 2 will actually start playing Okay, and then you can see it goes back to only Guitar 1 since Guitar 2 has only been assigned to play this line right here. Okay, and so the next thing that I'd like to do in this video is actually show you, um, we're going to add a third instrument, but it's going to be a rhythm guitar. Um, a rhythm guitar is different from the other two that we've used so far because it's a guitar part that is um, assigned basically to only strum chords. And there's actually... Um, a couple different ways you can do this, but the way that I want to show you is um, probably the easier way. Down here on the left, you'll have these rhythm slashes. So there's a whole note rhythm slash, half note, you know, the same kind of notes that you would have that we've already used. Except these are the, the, the rhythm slashes are for the guitar part that is only going to be strumming chords. So if I go ahead and use like an eighth note rhythm slash... Um, you can see it actually puts it in above the grand staff, which is actually, if you've never seen that before, that's the appropriate place to put these rhythm slashes for a guitar part that is only going to be strumming chords. So um, again, just to fill this in here, I'm going to go ahead and uh, just put in all eighth note rhythm slashes here. Oops, going a little bit too fast for myself. Oh boy. okay there we go um, and then once we're uh, done there um, I'm gonna come up here and click on this justify icon which we mentioned in our last video 
and you'll see it actually affects the rhythm slashes as well. So, you know, you can use that button uh, to make everything spaced evenly and make it look like you punched it in <laughs> cleanly so you don't have to worry about that while you're punching it in. Okay, so um, just like before, what we have to do is actually create a third guitar and then assign it to this rhythm slash part, just like we did with this uh, staff that we attached down here for guitar two. So let's go back to guitar setup. We're gonna click this icon again for a third guitar, call it guitar three. Um, standard tuning is fine, of course. And I think uh, we may as well change all of these to acoustic um, steel string guitars, just just uh, so it doesn't sound quite so noisy, I guess, when we go to play this back, since we're going to have three going at once. Okay, so there's guitar three, and we'll hit OK. And then uh, we have to use this guitar in icon again. Now notice in this case it's already indented, uh, and that's because where my cursor is, guitar one is already being assigned you know, to start playing this line here. So what happens when I click this button the first time, it's actually going to take out guitar one, um, which might cause you to panic at first, but that's just the way it works. So what we do is we click this again, and basically we have to put in guitar one again. So for guitar one, we want it to come in, um, you know, right where it was, where our cursor is. So we just have to check this box again for guitar one. And then you can see guitar three has been added to the list. And we have a new column for Rhythm Slash, so if we want Guitar 3 to play the Rhythm Slash up here, we just have to make sure we check that box there in that column for Guitar 3 and hit OK. And you'll see it'll put Guitar 3 right up there. So let's go ahead and play, and I want you to listen to what happens. Okay, so right now we're still only hearing Guitars 1 and 2. Um, again, it looks like Guitar 3 is playing something, but we don't actually hear any chords or anything coming out of that. So the reason for that is because with the rhythm slashes, um, not only do we have to assign a guitar to play them, but we also have to assign chords, um, you know, chords for the guitar to strum. So by default, there are no defined chords, and we actually have to go in and do that ourselves, and then we can input them uh, using our cursor and assign which uh, chords we want Guitar 3 to play. So the way that we're going to do that, first we have to define our chords, and we're going to go to this icon chord diagram list. And this is where our list will appear, so right now it's empty. And if we click this icon here, new chord diagram, um, it'll bring up this window, which is actually kind of cool. Um, basically you can click on a string and a fret. So like if I want a C major chord, like a typical C major, um, I can just click on basically where I want the notes to go. And then even for the open strings, if I click on those, it'll either close it or open it. And then over here, it'll auto generate a list of suggested names for the chord that I've created. So for C major, you can see C is at the top of the list because that's the most appropriate name. Um, it's kind of funny, but there's also other names that are technically correct for this C major chord. And uh, some of the names get pretty ridiculous, but Obviously, C is uh, the one that we want to use. Since it's at the top of the list, it's the one that's deemed most appropriate. All right, so we just click on C over here and hit OK, and you can see that it's going to add it to our chord diagram list. So now we can actually use the C major chord in our song. But uh, let's go ahead and add a couple more, just so it's not all one. Uh, you know, For example, we can add E minor. When I click E minor over here in the names, it'll update the name of the chord diagram, so that's why I do that. Hit OK. And then, um, I don't know, maybe we'll use G major while we're at it. And 3 is probably good enough, but you can add as many chords as you want and play around with that tool. Hit OK. All right, so now at this point we have defined some chords that we want to use. And now again, I just have to have my cursor where I want to actually assign the chord to the rhythm slash. Um, so if I want guitar 3 to start strumming right away, I want to make sure I have it on the very first note. And what I'm going to do is come over to this chord name text uh, icon, which looks like a C minor. And then over in the right here is our cached chord names. So th this is the same chords that we just defined. They show up here. And then to input them, all I have to do is click on like C, for example. And uh, you can see it'll put in that C major chord right here. So maybe I want this whole measure to be C major. Um, maybe I want the second measure to be E minor. 
and then maybe the last two measures can be G major, and I'm happy. All right, so now we can go ahead and play the file again, and you'll hear it'll actually start strumming those chords. Okay, so you can definitely tell it was working. Um, in fact, Guitar 3 kind of overpowered the other two, so um, we can actually fix that by going to Guitar Setup. And you can see each guitar has its own in initial volume. So by default, they're all on uh, triple forte, which is the loudest it can be. So maybe we'll take Guitar 3 and, you know, turn it down, uh, <laughs> you know, a few notches or something. Hit OK. And let's play it again. Okay, so that sounds a little bit more pleasant when we play it back. All right, so I think that's it for this video. Um, in conclusion, we went over a lot of different things. We added another line. We attached a new staff to an existing line. Um, we learned how to create new guitars and assign them to play different lines or at different points in the song. Um, we also learned how to do that for a rhythm guitar. So we added rhythm slashes. We created um, chord lists, and then we assign those chords to the rhythm slashes so that the guitar will actually play them. And uh, of course, we also went over the verification tool. So I think that's it for this video, and thanks for watching, guys. I'll see you next time. Bye.